So now we're going to cover two less common syntheses here in uh, the Curtius rearrangement and the Schmidt, Schmidt reaction. So there's a lot of variability in what gets covered in the amine chapters. So some of you will have this, some of you won't. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but we're not going to go through the entire mechanism. We'll see some similarities with the Hoffman rearrangement. If you notice our reactants are carboxylic acids rather than amides. Uh, but we have four carbons in the reactants. We only have three carbons in the product. And again, we're going to lose this carbonyl group in the process. Uh, as well as obviously the OH becomes an NH2 along the way. So come take a look at the way this works. Uh, we know that with a carboxylic acid, SOCl2 will transform this into an acid chloride. Uh, then NaN3 here will turn this into what's called an acyl azide. Looking like this. And if we take a, a little bit deeper look at what that acyl azide looks like here, So this is your acyl azide, and the big thing here to realize is that this lovely part of the structure is a good leaving group. That's going to form N2 gas and bubble out of the solution. And this does a similar rearrangement to what we saw before. We're going to do this lovely rearrangement, kick off the N2 gas, but simultaneously these will dump in, and we'll once again go through an isocyanate here. So we'll have a nitrogen that's going to be double bonded to the carbon. That's double bonded to oxygen, but that nitrogen's also going to be bonded to this lovely group. And once again, that is an isocyanate there as well. The Schmidt reaction is really similar. Uh, instead of going through the acid chloride, we're just going to turn this directly into this acyl azide uh, in the process. So, uh, but eventually that gets converted into the isocyanate. And again, just like in the Hoffman rearrangement, those isocyanates uh, are going to lose CO2 and turn into the corresponding amine with one less carbon.